Hello everyone and welcome back to the Darkest Dungeon. In this episode I think I would like to do a quick mission to get some cash and some stuff so that we can start upgrading our high level people, our low level people, our town, everything that's important that we don't get to do. Uh, in that case I have been doing a quick look around here and we do have an apprentice short rune battles mission which is ideal because the more rune battles that we have the more opportunity uh, put him in the bloody sanitarium didn't I <sighs> alright plan B I was going to say we have a short one which means that the antiquarian gets more opportunities to have loot to augment a long one is not what I'm after Two mediums, a short that we probably can do to level up. But I don't want to level up our level ones or twos until they can start doing the level one bosses, which would certainly require a healer. And of course, in the previous episode, we haven't done anything since, so the stagecoach hasn't actually changed. So we're going to have to keep doing high level missions or start dismissing people and swapping out the um, stagecoach just to get that that healer in but honestly we've got one spot in our roster all we can do at this stage is put in people that we don't care about and then throw them out but that's basically this person right until we get a healer and then we can stop doing that scumming it up thingy and start doing something sensible i mean i'm thinking that maybe a medium room battles one is not the worst thing in the world and we did get a decent trinket last time let's see what it was is this one for the abomination we do have one abomination at level 2. Again, no healer, so we can't really take them out, which is a shame. Uh, and I would like to be able to play with Martinus a bit more, and of course, new Erasmus, because these are very interesting characters with their dancing around and doing a hell of a lot of damage. <clears throat> the meta on those is, is quite difficult to sort of keep on top of, because as mentioned, you have to make sure you take people who can be moved around. So why don't we take a... <clears throat> Why don't we take a veteran? Uh, oh, Miri, chill out. You're only a little bit stressed out. Uh, Rune Battles mission, which is going to be more loot, basically. It means we don't have to take anything. We don't have to find anything. Uh, it does mean that we're going to need a good healer, so we might as well take D. What's your... I think your... Yeah. Your your disease is one that I'm happy with. In fact, that's very much D to a T. Or maybe we should take Ash. No diseases. That's really annoying, though. So I'm not taking you... In fact, I'm kind of tempted to get rid of Ash's um, compulsive disorder here, because that's going to cost a lot to get rid of. Sharp intake of breath. Because of this skull, this skull means that it's um, burned in. It's, it's you know become a deep part of their personality. It's ingrained within them. It means that they're going to have to be basically flagellated twice as hard to get them to stop fucking about. These two are okay. That's okay. But these two just cause Ash to do stuff and it's stressing me out. Look, it's normally 1,000, but now it's going to be 5,000. I'm almost going to suggest that that is not worth it. These, by the way, you can lock them in. 13,000. Maybe we'll think about doing that when we're rolling in the cash. Uh, okay, forget Ash. Ash can stuff it. Miri was complaining about wanting to go out. So below 50% is fine. That's fine. Minus one crit is small amount of not great, but at the same time. Uh, why do you prefer to be in that? Ah, you've got the blackjack. Maybe I'll turn that off. Where are we going? Wield. I mean, the blackjack in the wield can be pretty decent, especially if we're going to come up against that mini boss type thingy. And there's a lot less stress in there. It's basically uh, poison and disease rather than stress. There are a few stress units um, but I'm actually quite happy to suggest that Miri should be there. We could take Jackery. Could take Tim again. Or Doug. If we can get Tim leveled up to level 3, that would be really nice. Uh, 4, I should say. And it's not got any bosses in it but we could still take a lot of damage there so... It's risky, but I think it may be worth it. And in fact, what we could do is also take Pete, who does like being in the third position and does have Sacrificial Stab. But we could also turn off maybe... 
He's actually Eldritch, which is pretty good. And we can switch these round during the run as well, don't forget that. Which I always do forget. Yeah, let's put Pete here. Because this way we have an augmentative healer. So if if, Ash, uh, if D can't keep up, we've got Pete available to also maybe provide a weird reconstruction every now and then. Um, but I want to make sure that everyone's got their, <clears throat> their skills in. So Miri's got three unlocked. It's going to be a bit expensive, but I think that's okay. Pep Talk's kind of useful. Just use your own stress, but you never have any stress because you're the only one who can de-trap traps. Uh, I mean, <laughs> none of these is really that great. Unless we're going to a very stressy mission, but we're not going to. We've actually got the ones we want, so I think I'm going to hold off on Miri for now. South only reduced stress by 25. All companions could increase stress by either 10 or 5. You may get stressed out a lot, so that could be helpful. Reduce torchlight by 100, increase stress by 15. But you can heal by 50%. And I think that's worth unlocking. Even if we don't use it, it's there, right? Less stress damage, less stress. Yes, that's good. Tim, you have 3 unlocked. That's I never use that, so I'm not going to unlock it. It could be really, really good as far as I know. Um, but basically all it does is stress, de-stress everybody and then make everybody really bad for the next four combats. But for the five extra stress reduction, I really don't think it's worth doing. If not religious... Really so this reduces your stress by a considerable amount. It's a bit like the, uh, the occultist's equivalent one. I mean, I don't really want to spend the money on something we're not definitely going to use, right? And D. Okay. If religious... 20% less stress damage. If not religious, 10% less stress damage. If religious, reduce stress by 15. If not, reduce by 10. That seems pretty good. It's quite quick as well. It's only 3. All companions, 15 or 5, plus 15 or plus 5. Like the, None of our other companions is religious as far as I know. So, only medium. Yeah, okay. I know that. Don't tell me that. I think... It's worth having this one on most people. But I don't want to spend too much money because it's going to be a medium mission. Let's do that and uh, stop dilly-dallying and get on with it. Let's make sure everyone's got... Yep, you can keep those. Uh, I want to... I want to bring everything back, but not from the people who are here. I like in XCOM 2 that if you press this button, it actually brings all trinkets back from people who are not currently about to be embarked. It's pretty nice, but we can just go to the end here and um, put them back. So you get this, and this, you get this one, this one, that's pretty good, 25%, and then 33%. If this doesn't show a marked increase in the amount of healing that D is doing, I'm going to start stressing out again and being super salty. So get ready for that, because it's going to happen. And then you get this, yes, and this. These are all ones that other people had on them whilst I was in the previous mission. Miri, you're a difficult one. Like, these are the two that we took with Snowlin on the previous episode. Are they the best, do you think? We know that dogs are ranged skills. We never use the food as well, the dog treats. Human is not that common. I would like something that does damage against Eldritch, to be fair. But I don't think we have anything that's specifically versus Eldritch. At least not in our, um, in our current set. I, there may be ones that do damage versus Eldritch. Because you've already got uh, beast damage and marked damage. But if we can find something that is versus Eldritch, if not now, then at least in the future and bear it in mind... We are using your stuns, actually, so we'll take that. That's not... I don't know if that's actually that necessary, because you're not going to be attracting any undue attention. But we are going to be using your bleed skills, I think. We're going to be using Hounds Harry, and then these two work together as well. So I think that seems good. Everyone's got them, right? Yep. So we're okay. 
Medium wield mission, we take three shovels, we take a stack and a half of food. This is this formula seems to have worked well enough so far. Uh, we do tend to find a little bit of everything on the way. I don't necessarily know whether we need to take the sorts of things that allow us to interact with curios in a manner that allows us to get more loot from them. Because I expect we're going to get a decent amount of loot anyway. Because we do have to beat all room battles. Which means there's going to be room battles. Which means we're going to be fighting not only for the battle. But probably for the chest inside it. So we'll take a couple of keys maybe. Uh, and some anti-venom seems like a good idea just to keep people alive. And if nothing else we can always use it to look inside a tree stump or something. See what we get out of that. little bit of water to stop me from uh, ruining my throat once again. Soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Now recall burn out this evil. Tim got Wield Adventurer in the previous episode and already had Wield Explorer so basically we were in the right place to take Tim. I could have taken Doug, Viva Phonics, but I thought ah, I didn't actually think at the time. It would be disingenuous of me to say I thought we should take Tim because of Tim's wield stuff, but it did occur to me as we were going in that Tim is probably the best one to take here. So Pete is going to be... oh, you're quite stressing. Pete's going to be a damage dealer until we find ourselves in a situation where D cannot keep up with the amount of damage that's happening to people. If you could stop having go first, per Lee's. There's nothing at the back, we can't iron swan it. We can wicked hack this and just kill it. Another one by almost twice as much damage as we needed to do, but that's okay, can't complain. Damage versus beast, these are beasts, it's gonna die. Did die. Could have dodged. Nine dodge is not insignificant. Uh, we have a stun and a judgment. It heals ourselves, which is actually quite nice. Executed with impunity. That's actually really useful because that just helps us finish off that unit. That, um, that battalion success. of maggots. Sax contents are mine. Aha! Well said. Treasure could staunch the flow of other worldly corruption. Hoping to find maybe a couple of torches on the way. There is a battle, but they are surprised. So that gives us an opportunity to think about this a little bit. Human, human, hu What? I mean, I see it now that you mention it, but that is pretty grim. Like, as soon as you realise that's a human... Yuck. And that used to be human as well. Uh, so we've got a beast, so you can attack the beast for 8 to 13 damage, which is not ideal. Bleed is 40, 40, 40, 40. So everything's got fairly okay bleed resist, but I think our bleed is actually, yeah, it's above 100%. Just attack that. If nothing else, our Hellion can yelp to try and kill them both. No, it doesn't do any damage. Whatever. If it bleeds, that's got a huge amount of protection. Luckily, we brought Pete. So I think we try and maybe, if it bleeds, something like this, or Iron Swan, the thing at the back, which has... That's still going to be really difficult to deal with. Alright, we definitely want it if it bleeds then, because we want to get around that protection with the bleed damage over time. <clears throat> that's the negative dodge one. Do you not have the negative... Ah! No, that's you. Okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just going crazy. Sacrificial Stab will... Probably kill it. It'll definitely kill that if it hits. What's our bleed? It's not bleed. All right. Versus Eldritch then. That's good. Those are Eldritch. But I want to get rid of that because that I think can just straight up give us rabies, and I don't want to get rabies. We can try and stun one of these. Forty-five. They're all forty-five. That one then. These ones tend to be low damage dealers. They just mark mostly. Not blighted, but that's okay. We can definitely keep up with that damage. And these two are just apparently just going to keep switching around, trying to uh, run away, but it's not going to work. Double blight is pretty bad. Slightly tempted to use anti venom, but not tempted enough to actually go ahead and do it. So this is the one that reduces prot. So we have to not resist the debuff. Didn't resist the debuff. Oh, it's only at 25, which is all of the protection still. Yeah, I keep doing that. It does actually do damage, which is not ideal. Uh, we can just keep hitting this one. So I think it's probably a good idea. Um, let's dodge. What are your dodge like? That's quite high. We could f 
fail. We didn't, so I'm okay with that. You can put up with that for now. What's this? Three damage per round, it's got five HP. I mean, that's a bit unfortunate, because that's basically going to kill it straight away. But I think it's worth taking something out of the equation. I apologize for my enunciation, by the way. I may be uh, failing at that to some extent. I think it's worth taking something out of the equation more than it is worth... Yeah, 12. That's really good. Man. More than it's worth trying to sort of let it be perfect. Try to min-max the amount of damage we actually do. It doesn't seem as valuable. So I guess we just keep, like, stabbing these. Because it's bonus versus Eldritch. And then this one does bonus versus the Mark. And we've deprotted it, and now it's bleeding. So we should be out okay coming out of this, but that was actually a very valuable dodge. But we're going to have to make sure you get as much... Um, we'll hack away at this. Uh, I guess we bleed this one. I think I've been underestimating the value of damage over time as well. Because it... If these things are going to get a go anyway, and we could do some decent amount of damage with a Hellion attack like that. Um, these damage are... Like, that's dead now. It did get another go, but we wouldn't have been able to kill it anyway. Now it's dead. The slow death now this one's dead. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Um, not really much worth doing. So we just end the fight, I suppose. Book of relaxation. It's a little book of calm. Probably said that last time we've seen that. I apologise if I recycle jokes. I just say what I think at the time. But I don't really tend to think of many different things. Ah, uh, you what? I, I'm apparent. I'm going to assume that what happened there was we didn't want to look in that tent because it was gross as hell. There's only 11 stress worth of growth. How can it be grosser than the stuff that we've been fighting all this time? Excuse me, how do you get to go first? That's bullshit. Oh my shitting god. We're going to have to camp like straight away just to get Pete to have no stress. Oh goodness. Keep resisting that though, that's perfect. Why have they had their entire go first? Just don't get rabies. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think we can keep up with this amount of healing, so... Do we do this? What's your move resist? 30%. What's your move chance? 119%. That seems pretty likely to move you. <laughs> well done. You absolute joker. Alright. Plan B. Bleed everything. 40%. 30%. At least we hit them all a bit. Oh, we did bleed them all. That's actually very good. How are you still... Yeah, I think... Uh, I guess we iron swan and try and get rid of this... Jackass at the back. What's that going on? Three. This always seems to be the case that you get not quite enough damage to actually kill you before you get your uh, when you get your next go, so that you don't get to actually do any damage to me. Oh, you vault. I mean, everything's taking a bit of damage every round now, so that's really handy. So you are now dead. There was no way we could have hit you before you got that go. So. I guess we just deal with that, and then we start attacking the dogs individually, I suppose. Which one's the closest to death? Uh, this one. Well, we could have killed any of them with that attack. In fact, now I think about it, it may have been better to go for the one with the highest amount of health, because it would have given us a, given us a better chance of killing it if you consider the bleed damage as well. But we've done what we've done. It is what it is. Uh, we can stab this now. Oh, it's, that, it's dead anyway. So, stab something else. I don't care. Yeah. Ha uh, what are you on? Three and two. Seriously? And you do no damage. Yeah. So... I mean, we guarantee this kill, basically, so we should do that. Well, not basically, literally guarantee that kill. Uh, everyone's health seems to be in top-up zone. Like an oyster card. Uh, effects. I mean, Pete's doing well with the amount of damage that he's doing, as well as the fact that... If we need him to, he can heal. But for now, he's putting out a decent amount of stabby damage. Curse me, maybe I didn't... Um, well, I did upgrade it. What else have you got? Abyssal Artillery. It's maybe better than this stab, to be fair. It also has damage versus Eldritch. I'm going to try it for a while. 
Um, mostly because we do tend to get things at the back and it can hit two. And it gets a bonus versus Eldritch. So anything Eldritch at the back, such as those uh, pretty gross bent over backwards human thingies that I was talking about earlier. What was that, by the way? Uh, we can hit them both at the same time is what I was thinking. More stress damage, more speed, more damage. So I guess it just makes a particularly disconcerting... Let's not touch that. Uh, tune. No, oh, John Williams here. Okay, scouting. I was going to say we haven't had much scouting for a while, considering we only have to do rune battles. So I'm only going to do rune battles. Uh, you are going to deal with that. Okay. It occurred to me we didn't bring Snowland, we brought Miri, and I was like, what have we got here? But I've already checked, so we're okay. Part of me was going, oh, I forgot we brought Snowland again. And then, of course, we didn't. You dumbass. This is why we bring those. Extra food is actually fine. Don't mind that at all. Was kind of hoping for maybe some jewellery or gold or some other delicacy that that beast had previously eaten. But you cannot win them all. Yeah, past turn. That's exactly what I want to do. Um, what is your stun resist? High. It's yours. Not as high. Protection. No. Yes. You're going down. Good. He left. Um, Abyssal Artillery can hit the two of these for five to seven, which will miss both of them somehow, but I guess you live and learn. I'm not so worried about this thing. It can do some stress damage, but uh, I've realised that actually. I probably am more worried about it. So I should, if it bleeds on this, yeah, let's uh, let's wail away on this Joker. These two can do some damage. I wasn't worried about the spread of damage here. I was just worried about the fact that this has got a lot more um, stress associated with it. Thinking this guy we can tank and then kill later, and then I realised this is the stress unit of this party. So actually, that's not what we want to be doing at all. Get rid of this thing first. Although I might still use the snow, uh, the Miri attack to get rid of that one in the middle because we've already marked it and it now got no protection, etc. So we'll do this. Did kill it. I was going to say if we roll well, we can kill it. So I think that was worth doing, even if it was uh, not this one. This unit doesn't actually need to die. We are doing six unit, six damage per round passively now, which is really good. Again, bleeds start working if you use something like the Hellion's attack. Um, which allows you... We could mark. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm just doing this. Um, if you'd use bleed attacks that also do a decent amount of damage, and our dodges are out of this world right now, then the bleed attack really comes into its own. In fact, you're the only one that needs healing. Oh, you need a little bit, but whatever. Might just try to stun this. Or heal yourself. You can judgment this. 5 to 11. Could kill it. Or you could miss. That's also cool. I would expect that the healing that you do from now is not related to the damage that you do to that. But, who am I to say, huh? Uh, now we... I mean... It only does less protection, so we don't really need to do that. We just keep attacking it. Now, this 8 damage per round now is ridiculous. That's the first time that's hit, so that's pretty good. And now we've got our negative dodge. That weird reconstruction earlier was actually supposed to be a demon's pull, but then I failed at it, and then I realised, actually, that's not too bad. Um, because it brought the corpse into killing range anyway, and did damage to that, possibly as much as the uh, demon's pull would have done in the first place. No, keep if it's bleeding it, we, uh, we'll end up with Huge amount of bleed damage. Yeah. Really. Really huge amount of bleed damage. Very valuable. And you have no dodge left, so... Oh, no, that was the other one. Never mind. But we still uh, hit it and heal ourselves, so that's valuable. Rush shot. Could miss. I think it's got a high chance to miss. It didn't miss, but that's okay. Well, we have a high chance to miss, apparently. At some point, I'll probably use these. Um, Not sure when. Just heal yourself. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hooray! A crit. What I was thinking was we could really do with a crit right now. Which is not true at all. Pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Um, I think I want those more than I want to be able to burn the light that torch the efficiently. Safety. Now this is a bit of a conundrum because we don't have any space, thanks to these bloody things, which look really good. So I'm going to keep them. I think they sell well as well, so they're worth quite a lot. But I think also, well, it is a medium mission. We could pick up more. So Let's just open this with this. That's the whole point of the key, right? Uh, we can't stack these anymore. You are having a laugh. 500 gold. We need these though. That's the imp so important that we take heirlooms. At least this one and this one. These, not so much. They show up a dime a dozen. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the next chest we open with that key has some in them. But now that we've got... I mean, that only stacks up to three though. That's No, this stacks up to three. Which is basically the worst. And of course, we can't put them back. It's not like we can come back to a chest and... You know open it again and see what we put back inside it. No, that's gone forever. That's how that works. Stashed heirlooms. Probably shouldn't have uh, <coughs> probably shouldn't have opened that. Oh, just eat some food. Kind of wishing I'd take it, taken the other ones, but again, they are a dime a dozen. I'm sure we'll fill that stack. In no time, there's... <laughs> Wrong order, game. That's fine. It's fine. It was inefficient, but it was not under my control, so I don't feel too badly about it. Two layers of searching? Yes. So there is no room battle in that direction. Probably means I'm not going to go in that direction. Unless we do so well by the end of it that we basically don't need to worry about the fact that we're still in the dungeon because we haven't even used our camping equipment yet, which can happen and has. I mean, even on um, on boss fights, you tend to find that you've got all the way to the boss. Measure. Oh my goodness! <laughs> to the and the alike. 500, 500, two. Uh, Good. That was not necessarily ideal, but I want more money, and I'm quite prepared to do what it takes to get it. There is a uh, two battles coming up, so we might as well use this now. Get the inventory space. Get the uh, stress damage sorted out. Get ourselves buffed up a little bit. Try and remove your incessant likelihood of failing to actually um, hit anything. If has mortality debuffs. So that all that does is prevent nighttime ambush for a cost of four. This one has a much better all round value. But I don't really want to do it, to be fair. Um, I mean, I think you can... You reduce your stress. How long does that take? Two. Come on, chap. Yeah, give her a pet. No worries. She'll be right. All companions... So that costs three. So that's a good idea. Now, you're back to uh, acceptable levels. So then we think about doing this, which is also three. You are in position one, which is a point of bringing you. Chance. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then... The rest of these don't really matter too much. Maybe we can pep talk. Does anyone else have pep talk? No, of course no one else has pep talk. That would have been valuable. Um, we could get yourself more crit. Might as well, right? What costs four? This does. We might as well do the ambush thing then. Less chance of surprise is almost uh, almost worth as much as any of the buffs that we can give because it basically increases all our speed. But the greater chance to surprise them increases our speed by a huge amount for the first round. Oh. Which is basically like having that one trinket on everybody as well. I didn't surprise anybody, so whatever. Um... Do these bleed? Not really. They are Eldritch, so you're going to be good against them, but I think... I don't think we can kill it. Which I suppose is a good thing, because if they're all, if one of them dies, it ends up leaving a space. Oh, of course you can't really attack anything now. Well, that's a problem. 
I guess we mark this for Miri. Hadn't occurred to me that I'd turned off my ability to hit the, the front, so I'll rectify that within time. We'll try this, and hopefully D will get a go. No, that will produce a, another one. It did not. Okay. And we'll ditch it. Unworthy. Alright, luckily it didn't produce a large unit, because that would have been pretty bad. Okay, this didn't work. But a victory nonetheless. This would work, but it doesn't have... That's a stun and doesn't do the damage to Eldritch. So I'm going to put back what we had. Mostly because it can hit something other than the front two. Which turned out to be a problem in that particular round. Okie dokie then. I guess that's not always going to be a problem actually. So I'm expecting in this combat, at least, we'll be able to be able to hit the back ones quite effectively. I mean, to great effect. So I suppose I'm actually going to do that. I was just fucking spiders. And they're surprised. As if you... Did you know you could surprise spiders? Two to three damage and then... Two more on top. Or we could just kill one, probably. Uh, maybe. And it could dodge it. That's a really high dodge, actually. I'm not a fan of that at all. Well, we'll try it. Yep. Kind of saw it coming, but okay. I think we just try and hit them um, as often as possible. We're going to try and hit them. So it's certainly going to hit that one. So I was wrong again. <laughs> Who knew? Who'd have thunk it? Minus 17 dodge is probably worth doing. We'll do that to you and hopefully you don't dodge the thing that tries to de dodge you, which you didn't. Um, you don't need to do anything except for that, so you might as well hit that because it has less dodge. Still 24 dodge is a huge amount. Miss. Ah, uh, it's okay. You'll live. In fact, you can do that judgment again and heal it back up again. Everyone's resisting all the things. You're definitely going to resist all the things because you have high resistance and a debuff to them as well, thanks to that trinket. I mean, I think we should hounds rush something else because I want D to be able to actually... Ah, oh, I don't really care. <laughs> I was going to say I want D to be able to heal that damage he just took and blah, 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 and yada, yada, who cares? It doesn't matter, that's a tiny amount of damage and she's going to survive it. Blight is not really worth talking about. This might be a stun though. It is a stun. Small problem, but not a not, not, like It's not really going to change much, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. So we get to go again. We might as well hex that one. Now they're both on 7 dodge, which is basically acceptable. I assume it's a percentage chance of dodging or something. It just It's just a number, you see. A crit. That's valuable. Pete didn't really give a shit about it, but Miri cared about their own, which is the important one. And that was a very good hit as well, so happy with that. For goodness sake. <laughs> Brought low and driven into the mud. That's it, yeah. So we'll continue adventuring. We might as well use our last key. Get what we can get. It's cash. That's decent. Uh, well, there is a scout. We could see if there's... There are two curios. We might as well have a look at them. Miri can do that. Stop that. We won a torch. Well, I'm so glad we came this way. We can't use that. Let's just go. There's no point really doing anything else. I was hoping maybe a bit more treasure that we could swap some of our inventory out for, but it was not to be. Right, we've got level 4s, lots of people now, and a level 5! Our very first level 5, we're going up through the spectrum for sure. Oh yeah, brilliant. Well, you don't, I don't mind the accuracy, but the stress damage is a problem. Uh, uh, heal skills while camping. Couldn't give a toss, you haven't got any. Yeah, Unholy Hater is actually pretty useful. What did I click there to make that happen? Whatever, Resilient, what does that do? More Stress Heals, that's pretty good. Replace Steady, which I think was a better accuracy or better crit, which is a problem as well. I mean, we can lock in better. good now, stuff like me, um, you are a part of this in the Sanitarium, place. but... Uh, what did you win? Yeah, Bulimic. 
I mean, oh, you've got them as well. Do you have heal skills at all while camping? Just that one. Not really. Um, yeah. It's so expensive to lock in these good quirks, but at the same time, some of them are so useful for certain uh, certain characters, like having an a, a accuracy buff on a Hellion is great. And then it goes and gets replaced by a new quirk, which is a pain in the ass. See if you want to sell any of these. Sort by name. Bring them all back. Sort by name. There we go. We didn't have one of those already, so it's out, so that's pretty good. We have two of these, but they're, they're kind of decent, I think. We could definitely start giving those to lower level units and sending them out to the ruins. So I'll definitely keep two, just in case we want to use two at once. Two play doctors on the same run? Is that worth the opportunity of getting another thousand? I don't think it is, so we'll sell that. A bounty hunter, it does look like the bounty hunter, so that makes some sense. More... Malay skills, less move skill. Now the Bounty Hunter does have a come hither, which sends out that hook and tries to drag the, uh, the enemy unit towards them. Also two beasts, so that's pretty good as well. Uh, yeah, all these duplicates I'm going to keep as duplicates. Uh, okay, well, we did get some cash. We did get some levels. We've got one level 5 now and a hell of a lot of level 4s. So now we're starting to look into a good position to maybe start doing some... Uh, some level 3 bosses. Obviously D can't come along, but Ash, we didn't level up. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Now, there, there is a risk that we level away the units that we were going to take. But we can take Ash, go to build, uh, kill the Hag or the Swine King. This actually seems like a pretty good party for that. Um, there's a lot of... I assume they're beasts. Don't know. But you've got versus beasts, you've got versus Eldritch. Maybe we swap you out for someone else, but like Holmesy or Jekry. But I think what we're going to end up doing is having one party and then a different party anyway, because they might level up so much from doing it in the first place. But that's in the next episode. That is the end of this episode. So let us talk about the recent past and the present rather than the future. The present is, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly did. It was a very, very valuable, uh, it was a, an encouraging run. It was a morale boosting run, which is good to have every now and then, and if you can have them on every single run, that would be perfect, but of course then it wouldn't be the darkest dungeon, it would just be, you know, Playmobil fun factory. What am I talking about? All I'm saying is, thank you for watching, hope you will watch the next one if you liked it. I'm not too bothered about whether you leave a like on the video, because it's not like I'm going for analytics or anything, but I would appreciate it, as before, if you would spread the word. This is a fairly new channel, and the more subscribers the better. But until the next episode, thank you once more for watching, and I'll see you then.